Back before they had photography, doctors, and usually during a war, would have to be really good at drawing anatomy. And this particular, my back piece came out of an anatomy book and some um, unknown doctor had drawn it with all of his other anatomy things. And I think it, I think it might've been a guy who um, had to you know, be in the Civil War from the way that the, you know, the, the people, the period looks and the people that are in the bags. And it, it, I just thought it was really amazing. It's pretty that sick. The doctor did that, and it was probably because he was cutting people's limbs off, you know, and they were like his citizens of his own, you know, north and the south or whatever. Whoa. Dude, that's insane. Look at it. It's like, oh my God, it's the Speed Wolf. He drew this yeah. ages ago. Whoa. Yeah, my friend saw he drew Speed Wolf. He, he tried to make Speed Wolf look like me that's at sick. the time. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Christina, welcome to The Void. We're here in a weird, cavernous, magical dark room with uh, Matt Pike. Hi, and again. Hello again. <laughs> Hello. It's, it's been a while between pool parties. Yeah, yeah, it sure has. <laughs> so we're just talking about um, what happens when you start sort of partying sober, vegetarian. Uh, yeah, it's, it's a different yeah. world. <laughs> I was just getting to that. Or like I was, I was laughing because uh, I was at this show uh, we were playing with. It was Exodus and Anthrax, and um, Slash and Kerry King came out or whatever, and I was talking to Slash because he's sober too now, and I was like, dude, you know how I party now? And he's all, I know what you do. Uh, I was all, you know what I do? And he's all, yeah, you pee a lot. And I'm all, that's exactly it. That's like what I was going to say. <laughs> I was all, good, I got to go pee. And he's all, I'll follow you, dude. I got to go pee, dude. <laughs> and everybody that's around us is like doing shots and woo! You know? But you know what? Like your kidneys are like, thanks, man. Yeah. You know, they're like stoked. Your kidneys... Yeah. Like your organs are like, hey, Matt, like, thanks. That's, that's really awesome. I'm out. It's pretty good, though. Like, I think it's, um, it's an interesting place to kind of be in. Like, I feel like I've been sober for three years. I feel like you kind of, you kind of think differently. There's, there's clarity. It takes practice to just do it, though. I'm not the type of person with my lifestyle that doesn't, like, every now and then fall off the wagon or something. You got to live. I'm in a, a, you won't sleep for like three days and then you're in a bar till 4 a.m. So it's taken me a bit of time to like, you know, really have a routine when I'm on tour. But now with the routine on tour, it's pretty easy for me, especially if I have a bus and I'm not flying every day like I am right now. I'd slip like one hour and three days right now, but... Yeah. Do you have like a little, well, yeah. I go and I get my little smoking robe on and like put, you know, <laughs> put my slippers on and just hang out and talk to my fans for a little while and then usually like <laughs> go to bed and watch a movie, probably eat a bunch of stuff. You know, I went vegetarian recently, so that's been like a good thing for me, I think. It's a good way to kind of have longevity in touring life. Like you gotta, I think you gotta yeah. be in good practice and you know, <laughs> and you made a really good album. Yeah. Like, the, this record's well, kind of... Dumped, so I always make a good album. I always get dumped and I make a great album, so... It's hard. It's a hard thing, but it's good to kind of commute it to music, like, to turn it into, you know, turn emotions into something, you know, beautiful. Yeah, it did. No, I, I didn't break up with uh, my ex-fiancee because um, there's a lack of love. It's just the lifestyles. You know, she's a lawyer, a musician. I never come home, and she never comes home when she's home. So it was just like, you know, now we're better off just being like super good friends. And, That's awesome. You know, it, it wasn't like ugly. I can I can understand that, man. It definitely hurt. Is it? Yeah, it, well, it totally does. It's like, you know, it's... Exactly. Like I, I wrote it down. It's like riding a, ho a wild horse along a black sand beach and then like going underwater and it turns into a mermaid horse with like metal hooves. <laughs> It's kind of like that, that's the kind of visual I get from, from the album because you've got like that kind of the hook and the melody and stuff is like the waves. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so I kind of focus. I focus more on that on this album, like my singing and the melodies and like not, not all, you know, there's some thrash, you know, hardcore songs, but I, I try, you know, Jeff and I and Des, like, um, I'll try to get a little more. Uh, of a songwriting thing with like a lot of harmony and in depth and a lot of um of the steadier heavier timing and stuff it was like tides dude it's like a difference between like being in the kind of surf where there's like a rip and you're gonna drown and like get like water up your nose and this is more like a beach where you can kind of like hang out for a while oh yeah and i also did like all the solos on that album 
each solo I picked like one of my favorite people, like one's like a Tom G Warrior, and then a, it kind of turns into a Slash solo. There's another one that I did a Hanuman solo on, and I tried to make it exactly like an influence from, you know. You channeled him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did you wear their clothes and shit. Channel. I tried to channel all like my leads, and they all have a, a different person. <laughs> emulate their playing. I wouldn't copy anything. I'd just emulate like what I thought they would do right there. Because was, I'd yeah. be undecided about my own playing. So <laughs> <laughs> what was what angle. was yeah. First time I ever done that and it like kinda turned out rad. That's kinda cool. Yeah. yeah. It's kind of transmuting humans. Well it's like, you know, we're all connected. So you you know, you've kind of whatever's going well, through them well, is yeah. You know, my more favorite guitar players music you know obviously i'm influenced by so obviously they have something to do with what i do is that's why i can like emulate it the way that i want to emulate it You know, the first kind of shit I was listening to was like, you know, I was a little kid and it was like ACDC and Australia. My dad, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. My dad would uh, play Black Sabbath and Pink Floyd and Led Zeppelin. And, you know, everybody kind of started there from yeah. my age because that's, you know, ZZ it's a good Top. time. ZZ Top, I always loved Hendrix. Ingve Malmsteen came out and I liked him a lot when I was a little kid, you know, before everybody <laughs> started making fun of him because of his. He, he's just Swedish, he can't help it. <laughs> and he's so fucking good, it's, it's ridiculous. You know? <laughs> Proggy stuff, though, like Mahavishnu Orchestra that later got introduced into my life. And I'm, I, was, I must have heard that when I was like a baby, you know, or like... And it internalized. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I knew the music the first time I heard it yeah. that I remembered. And I was like, why do I know that? It sounds so familiar, so it must have been. Yeah. When I was a child. I swallowed it. Okay. Um, now, there's all these kind of, uh, like, I really like the album in terms of, like, addressing all these dark spirits because I think, you know, um, what has kind of happened, and, you know, that is kind of like children of Sabbathine kind of shit. Because a lot of music now, I was listening to something else, some pop shit, and I was, like, listening to it, I'm going, it's so self interested and it's so shallow and it's so me and this and... You know what I mean? I think it's actually affecting a generation of kids to become really obsessed with themselves and not look oh, into deeper. Not. Facebook is about narcissism, you know? And voyeurism. Needs, yeah, and voyeurism, and everybody needs to know what everybody else is doing every time of the day. I like Instagram because it's kind of fun, but when it starts, like, punishing my life because someone saw me somewhere with someone else doing something and someone else is mad at you. I'm just like, man, if you're going to base my fucking relationship with anyone, I don't care if you're my best friend, I don't care if you're someone I hate, my enemy, if you base a relationship off that, we're done. Yeah. I, I really don't want fucking anything to do with you because you're basing it off... Uh, it's one-dimensional. It's It sucks, yeah. And it's like, man... And my, my time's valuable to me, and I, I have this new philosophy where I don't think about the future, I don't think about the past. The future is what-ifs. The past is, you know, usually a scar, and if it's not a scar, it's happy memories, and that's cool to think about. But I'm present right here, right now, and until this moment ends, it could end, like, right now for me, and there could be death. I take my time very seriously, and, like, when I'm hanging around with someone or I'm giving them my attention, it's like, that's all I have to give, is the time that I'm living right in this moment. You're getting like zen and, and shit. Really, it's really hard to, it's hard to practice. Like, Dude, well, you. I find myself drifting and worrying about stuff, and I'm like, I have no fucking control over that. I mean, I can plan what I'm gonna do, but what happens is not, I can't go, oh, what, what if this happens? This, the, Dude, no, that's, no control yeah. Over that shit. You're practicing mindfulness. Yeah. It's like, it's everything. I'm just trying to be an individual person that's a good person in the world that, you know. I don't know, it must be weird for you as well, like all these kind of musicians passing on and stuff. You kind of look at it and oh, it's yeah. like, yeah. And then, yeah, Lemmy died and like right away I got my Lemmy tat. Oh my like we're, that's we amazing. Be right next door to my uh, 
sound man roadie's uh, tattoo shop in San Diego. And my other friend I was on a little trip with, and I live with him in New Orleans, and he's like my roommate. It's his house. I just always stay, you know. I'm like his roommate that comes and goes. <laughs> and so we, we took an RV, and we're driving and camping all the way down one, because fuck Christmas. And, uh, yeah, we got down to San Diego, and that happened. And, um, yeah, we all did, did the Lemmy tattoo. That's awesome. You know, that kind of stuff. And then Bowie died. And then, uh, yeah, a really, really good friend of mine, Patrick, died, which he's a super good friend of mine. And uh, I, yeah, it was kind of, it was really bummed out. And I it's didn't get to go to the funeral because I was, I had a tour, but I got to go to his grave after I got home, you know. And then uh, I lit a candle, and I was kind of laying down on his grave, and then my hair started on fire from the candle. So now I have this whole fucking back of my head is like a burnt split end, but it's okay. Yeah. <laughs> he's, he's probably somewhere laughing at you. <laughs> Just a little. <laughs> yeah, fucker probably did it. I don't know, man. I think sometimes death kind of teaches you to really value the people, like makes you value your time, makes you kind of think about, yeah. I was saying about what I was like being present and and like really being present. That shit can happen to you anytime and everybody's going to fucking die, you know? Guaranteed. Thinking about the future and the past too much, you're wasting your time. You're missing because, yeah. That's my whole fucking theory. Dude, tomorrow never comes. Like it's it's never tomorrow. Oh, it's on the yeah. fucking way. I mean, look at the fucking world and all the shit. The dollar is gonna collapse. No, there's no chance it's not gonna. What's gonna happen then? Just picture the scenario. You think they're gonna provide like water, public works, you know, trash take? Po- we'll poison water, fucking yeah, lead we, water, we man. Nothing. They're not gonna provide that much food for that many people. They're not gonna provide water for agriculture. They're not gonna provide anything that costs money because the globalists are a bunch of fucking douchebags. That shit comes through. There's gonna be a fucking pole shift. No one's gonna believe it because they think that the human experience is going to be everlasting. A bunch of us are going to fucking die. And well, the planet you should yeah. make your fucking peace with because we're all going to fucking die. It, you know, well, the planet can't sustain you it. You get another one. You just, energy is not created or destroyed. It's only altered. So We'll become something else. Yeah. Or like we're transmuted. Here again and, you know. We've gone from 1 billion people to 7 billion people in, in 100 years. Yeah. That's like not sustainable on any level. Like, no, no, and no, no, yeah. No. That's what the like elite are trying to do. They're probably trying to depopulize us, or populate us through food, through, you know, like GMOs, through Monsanto and wheat. How many people do you know that had a fucking wheat, you know, a gluten problem? You know what I mean? They're allergic to gluten before the fucking 1990s. No one even fucking had a problem with wheat until Monsanto's fucking little seeds got in there. That's really interesting. Everybody's all, oh, I'm allergic to gluten. I can't eat it. It just makes, you know. And it's like, I never knew anybody when I was growing up until like the late 90s into the 2000s that is fucking allergic to gluten. What do you think that is? I think that's Monsanto's bullshit, you know? I mean, all the evidence points to it. And that's some like real, yeah. Little fucking, and that's not a conspiracy theory. That's actually pretty. Tin foil hats on my head. That is not a conspiracy. That is a fucking fact. Now, last time I saw you here, you were here with sleep. What was that to like, kind of getting back to the, with those guys? Like, that was really, yeah. Those tours are really short. And I really enjoy getting together with those guys because I love the shit out of them and our crew. And it's just funny the whole time. And it's a blast hooking up that many amps and playing. And got like a wall, man. Fucking get sleep. A lot of people don't get sleep, but it's it's like we can do whatever we want. And people still love it. Oh yeah, people still love it. And the people who don't love it, like, don't fucking go. <laughs> Why are you even fucking critiquing it if you don't understand it? You paid you money, bitch. It? Yeah. <laughs> It's, it's it's a fucking really weird band. It's just the way it is. But it's good to be weird because it's like it kind of hooks into people's mind. You know, well you can like sit there and listen to that really long big song album and just kind of. A lot of people have gotten really high and had a really good time. You know, you can't hate on that. Said ch- ch- chills up your spine, or it's supposed to totally confuse you. And that's really the good things in life do that. Like you know, and it was good. I've got this um clip of you that I took of the Dragon on solo and then it kind of ends. It's amazing, that's my favorite part of the thing. It's just really funny. You know, it's good to kind of see people moved by things. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I like that too. I try not to feed my ego too much, you know. Sorry, yeah. <laughs> you suck. <laughs> no, it's easy to do, you know. I do I'm a really fortunate person, but I worked really hard to like get where I'm at. But you know Humility is important. Yeah, humility is really important, but when people say stuff like that it makes you 
really appreciate what you're doing because you're actually doing something in the world that means something to people. It's a cool audience. Changing people's heads in a small way or a large way or whatever it is. It's like, I think that's really important. It's like a, yeah, it's like a planet, like Sabbath, it's like all roads lead black to Sabbath. And then it kind of created this whole, like, I thought it's like almost like a whole world around it. Like all these people picked up threads and like, you know, there's shades of it and everything. No, you did a tour the other year with like, I Hate God and um, Corrosion of Conformity with High on Fire. What was that like? And do you guys have much of a history? Oh yeah, I've, yeah. I've known the I Hate God guys since I was like, Probably like 19 or 20 or like, when we first got sleep together, we had just been, we were as best as death before that. And uh, yeah, I met Jimmy Bowers and Joe. He's a dude, man. And all, all those dudes. And um, yeah, and like we've known him all these years and here and there we'd run across each other. And now I'm in New, New Orleans a lot. So I see those guys a lot more often. And we've done a bunch of stuff. You know, we're down, we'll play festivals with us or you know, I Hate God will play festivals with us, so we run into him a lot more. And we went out with um, like, uh, the Clear Light, the Mystic Crew at Clear Light when they had that going on, and like uh, that was kind of like Southern Rock Jam stuff. It was really, really good. And, uh, went out with them then. So we've kept friends over the years, you know. It's like, what were the gigs like that back then? Huh? What were the gigs like back then? Like, I like kind of getting a window it into fun it. fun and like everybody's just so funny who are in these bands. Like, it's comedy the entire time. Like, we're cracking up the whole time. What about Corrosion and Conformity? Like, that's pretty I rad know, peppers back with that. Yeah. Man, I, when I was a kid, uh, I got that Corrosion Animosity album. And then I got Eye for an Eye later on a cassette tape. And <laughs> I loved that shit. And then I kind of, you know... The, I like Deliverance, I love Deliverance. I do too, but I never got into it till like way later when when Pepper actually joined later on. I didn't really know, I didn't know it was Corrosion when I first started hearing it. It's the different, show. hey. Yeah. Oh, it's completely different. Dude, what I, yeah. that? Like, what the fuck? And then someone's all, it's Corrosion and Conformity. I'm all, no. Really? That's a, it's so apples. Well, it's different. Yeah, yeah. It's apples and oranges, but I still like the old stuff, but I like that, you know, I like the newer stuff too. It's mm. just, they're different. You know, one's like, <laughs> I want to call one, I'm like leaning. one corrosion wood burner and one corrosion animosity, you know, <laughs> like, I don't know. But it's good to evolve, you know? It is. I, shit, I've done that with every, thing. every band I've been in. Well, sleep kind of just keeps doing its thing. What is it doing? Yeah, do you guys kind of spend much time on it? Are you, oh, yeah. you know, you haven't, a lot. we have, yeah. You make a thing? Make a thing. Some things in the work, but I'm not going to elaborate because then that gives me some sort of deadline. I don't, like, I don't hey, man, deadline. you said that thing. I don't want to have a deadline. I don't want to fucking work really hard on it and, you know, make whatever we do in the future. Make it art. It, it needs to, like, completely blow everybody's... No pressure. Off. And part of it, some of it's halfway there, so... Yeah. I'll, that's all I'm going to say. That's pretty awesome, though. I'm glad it's, like, germinating. Yeah. But it's good kind of seeing bands kind of come back. Like, it was funny, it was, I was saying before, we was talking to Other Gates, and they kind of came back. After oh, a long they were time, so and good when we played with them the other night, they're so good. It's fucking rad. Uh, Adrian Ellenson is just insane to watch. Like yeah, it's just insane. Fucking rad, totally. And I, like they were kind of saying some cool shit. They're like, you know, now we do things differently. Like we broke up when we were twenty because it's a pressure, and you know, all that kind yeah, of stuff. Yeah, and now, dude. Yeah. But then when you start making money and getting organized about like the way shit runs smoothly, it's not it's not as horrifying to like go on tour. Like you're like, this is a commitment. I'm gonna sleep and eat shit on floors for the next fucking month. Oh my god, you know, two. Really couch touring in your 40s. Like. No, no, no. Can't do that. I need, I need my introversion. You know, I was like, it's like take your shit seriously, but don't take yourself too seriously. Yeah. You know, have fun with it. It's the best job in the world if you can get there, you know, if you can get there.